You know, every time that I go live, the thing asks me, are you ready to go live? And every time I see that button, I think, eh, not really, but might as well. So salutations, kindred spirits. Greetings. It's four o'clock central. That's my time zone. And Wednesday, this is my time slot to go live and do magical things on YouTube. So, hey, today we're uh, having a, a packet trick party. As I say these words, I can't imagine more dorkier words have ever been spoke, but welcome to my jam. I got to, before I get rolling here, we like to give a couple minutes to get people in and stuff. I got to say some thanks about first and foremost, always nice to start a, a stream with a little, uh, a, a super chat. Got one of those from Craft by Phoenix, Craft by Fee. Thank you very much. And I thank you for joining the membership. Also thank the Marvin, thank you to Marvin M who joined the membership pre-stream. And if y'all don't know what the membership is, I'll talk about uh, that more as time goes on. Uh, oh, I did this. I said I took the time to mention a few people that joined this week. Marvin M. Thank you. Oblong Abatasor. Sounds like something out of Jurassic Park. No, <laughs> just, just John Henry. That's a familiar name. Hey, John, welcome to the membership in Kid Iowa. Good to see you. Uh, uh, have you not been a member? I've seen you around so much. Anyway, thanks again. You guys are an important piece of my puzzle. I appreciate your jam. Let's make sure the tech's working before I get rolling over here. Sometimes sometimes I don't have sound and stuff. And uh, truth be told, this is the first time I've touched. This is the first time I've touched a magic prop today. So this is me doing a loose warm-up before we get ready to press the digitate and I don't know why I'm warming up with a deck of cards because uh, today's topic is packet tricks. And if you don't know what packet tricks is, well, you might know it by the end of this 30 minute session. That's my loose goal with these 30 minutes. I forgot to thank. I forgot to thank not just the members. I also need to thank the shoppers. I got to mention my website, conjure.com. I know some of you shop there. I appreciate you spending your money there. And if you haven't, thank you for con considering that. And uh, if I'm thanking people, I also got to thank the people who like and comment and share my videos. Uh, you appease the algorithm, and that's really the most important piece. So, hey, guys, if you could drop a like and do that thing just for a minute. Greetings. All right. Look at all the kindred spirits in the stream. Nice to see everyone here. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started with uh, tricks. I have a few that I want to talk about and do today. I'm going to start. I'm going to put up. We'll get back to the deck. I have a thought on packet tricks that involve a deck. We'll get back to that. Let's zoom up close for, you can tell what this is because I wrote it on there. Sometimes I forget things, so I write it on the packet trick holder. This is a packet trick holder. And uh, I feel like my lighting's a little subdued. By the way, did you notice? We're rocking a new setup today. Heave hoed the curtains. The wife decided that she didn't want these shelves in the living room. So now they belong to us. And there'll be things there to look at as time goes on. I hope it's appeasing to your eye holes. As I hope this is, one of the classics of uh, packet trick magic. And truth be told, <laughs> look at me not being set up to do this. Stage manager's fired. Truth be told, I am. <laughs> Man, there's so many things. The checklist is many. Pre checking capitulating queen's preset was not on the checklist <clears throat> truth be told i only carry a couple of packet tricks when i'm working as a professional oh i know what i did i never mind it was preset well i thought this i thought it might it might be interesting to start this with a four for four count let me go back to that setup it might be better all right as I was saying, truth be told, this is only one of maybe three packet tricks I've carried in my lifetime as a working professional, and uh, we're going to do all three today. So uh, you saw the queens. You might not have noticed, and maybe you did, that one of these queens is not like the other. One of the queens does not belong, <laughs> and we're going to get a Someone from chat to pick a, I need someone from chat to pick one of the queens. I'll give you a hint. It's one of the red queens that's unique. So someone from the chat would comment one of the queens and please take your time. <clears throat> I'm paid by the hour over here. So it's part of the AdSense revenue 
situation. Maybe I'll discombobulate these to confuse the viewers at home as we wait for viewer participation. We're waiting. <laughs> Well, someone didn't read the rules properly. David O did, and he's coming in just like we rehearsed. David O says it's the Queen of Hearts. Of course it's the Queen of Hearts. If you look at the back of the cards, you can see how one of them is a striking Archangel White back. And indeed, it's the Queen of Hearts. It's the most popular card in the deck next to the Ace of Spades. Now, Fortunately, I have backup plans. I could also do this trick if you said Queen of Diamonds. As noted, it has to be a Red Queen. Well, it doesn't have to be, but the red ones look the best. I mean, look at that striking glamour nugget back on the Queen of Diamonds. So if you had said Queen of Diamonds, that's what it would have looked like. I, I, I don't generally do the Queen of Clubs. This is why I sway away from the, from the let me explain, the uh, somewhat common blue bicycle back. It's not as striking on the, on the back of the Queen of Clubs. And I could really do it. Uh, actually, I can't do it with the Queen of Spades. I have to do it a little different because it's already red on the back. Since this one is red on the back, you have to do it this way. You change the collection to blue. So, yeah, see, these are blue now. And now the Queen of Spades is the only one that is red on the back. And uh, if you don't know what to pick, which I don't sometimes, is you just do this and you make each queen a unique color. This is option C and maybe the best recommendation to finish the intro number to the packet trick jam. And here we are doing it. That's uh, your opening number, capitulating queens. I'm doing this and my wife is texting me like she doesn't know 4 p.m. on YouTube is my time slot. Let, let me click the focus button on our finely tuned Apple products. I hear you, Aaron. She just sent me an email. I'm also thinking I want a little more light over here. Let's just, whoop, I don't know if that's better, but that's what we're going with. Hey, let's talk about this trick just for a moment. And we can enlighten some of the uh, viewers. We've got questions. <laughs> we have applause. That's, th that's uh, thank you, Marty and uh, uh, Serious Joker. Are the cards heat activated? They're not. Uh, that's crazy. It is crazy. I agree. And it is so good. So let's talk about what it is. It's one trick card. If you're not aware, we have a loose topic last week. I'm segueing into this week. And one of the things we're doing today is a giveaway. I'm giving away, I'm actually giving away all of this. We're giving away this bundle and I'm going to spin the wheel. We're going to do a YouTube comment pick for that. Spinning the wheel for another prize. We'll talk about that in a moment. But one trick card makes all that work. This is a creation. Let me talk about this guy. If I had to send you one place to learn it, it's going to be here, over here. <laughs> Jim Swain, uh, Capitulating Queens, 21st Century Card Magic. Great book. You'll find that routine described within it. And you just need one trick card to make that happen. Uh, a couple of different backs and uh that helps too. If you want to just buy the trick, let me send you to one of my favorite. Uh, where do we do we have Mare around here? I thought I had. Let's see if we can do it this way, folks. I'm stretching my uh, capabilities. Let's see if we can share. Ah, there's Mare Yetted's site. I am not paid by Mare Yetted. I don't even know if he knows that I do this. But I like to send uh, I like to send my people to the place where they can get good things. So here you can get the cards, the instructions, difficulty intermediate. It's an Elmsley count, so it's an Elmsley count and a double lift. And uh, let me tell you, anything on Mayor's site you'll probably be happy with. There's quite a few items on this page that I've considered doing, and you'll probably see eventually. You've seen Call of the Wild. You've seen me do that one. Stretching Queen, I'm actually talking about a version of that later, especially while, anyway, this is Marietta's site. Uh, if y'all like spending money on magic tricks, go spend some money there. And uh, there, we talked about other people doing good things in magic, talked about Jim Swain and Capitulating Queens. Well worth your attention if you like packet tricks. The two is four count opener. It's questionable. I don't know. Ah, questions. Speaking of questions, let's talk about this trick. As I was going through the comments, and I'm giving away, I'm giving away this trick. Actually, this is John Bannon's Twisted Sisters, and I think I'm just going to do this for myself 
in lieu of doing it for the audience just because of timing. Uh, Ramon, Ramon, I hear you there. Let's do Q&A after I get through this packet trick party, buddy. All right. I'll be happy to take some questions and give some answers. I'll hang out for some extra time and we'll do that later. So uh, <clears throat> Marty Jacobs brought up the question of whether or not B-Wave and what is B-Wave, Mr. Khan? Well, B-Wave is this trick by Max Maven. Interesting enough, the B-Wave B is the trick that I saw David Copperfield perform post-show. He, he chooses to use that trick after he does his stage performances. So what I'm looking for here is uh, maybe some feedback from my magician viewers. If you think B-Wave is better, or if you think Twisted Sisters is better. Uh, Marty commented that Max said that uh, B Wave was a down uh, that Twisted Sisters was a downgrade to B Wave that he took a, a great trick and made it good. Hmm. I don't know. I love Twisted Sisters. So I'm looking for comments in the thread below. This will do a couple things: generate algorithmic appeasement as well as da -da -da, get us a viewable thing post stream for people to. Uh, peruse. All right. So it's uh, what you do with the Twisted Sisters. We could probably start this with an Elmsley count. <laughs> we were talking about Elmsley counts recently to show four blueback. Why don't you do this? Use your imagination. Pretend these are queens. Pretend these are queens. Let's do it. Let's, let's have someone name a red queen. I'm going to break my rules and do this. I, I need someone to name a red queen. The first red queen we'll name we'll use, and then we'll go from there. Note that you don't even have to do an Elmsley count with this. This trick could be self-working. And when I think of giving away tricks to uh, people, and this will go one of my community viewers, diamonds. All right, Pro Basil says diamonds. So Queen of Diamonds, that's the one we're going to use. Diamonds, diamonds. And then we'll need a black queen. So if someone would name a black queen, we'll also use the black queen that's chosen. And again, someone's going to win this trick. I'm going to send it to one of my community commenters. If you visit my community posts, thank you. And you're on the wheel. I'll draw for it right after we do the trick. Spades. David Palmer says spades. So we have the queen of diamonds and the queen of spades. If you're not typing spades, you're typing the wrong cards. All right, here we go. Watch as I do nothing, but I do it very well. Whoosh. And like a ghost, like a ghost through a castle wall, so doth the queen of spades arrive over here. And on this side, you got it, the queen of diamonds. Now, this is only good if the queen of diamonds has the red back. And it does, because it came from the red side. And the queen of spades has the blue back, because it came from over here. And as good as that trick is, the interesting thing is if you would have named any other cards, the trick would not have worked at all. So y'all nailed it. Diamonds and spades. And hey, it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner every time when you do this. I just did that incorrectly. Did I do it incorrectly? <laughs> when you do it for your friends. Man, did I double back the wrong way? Yeah, that was, I don't know what just happened on the end there, but hey, it's not unlike me to blow a self-working trick. Y'all do keep in mind that as I bring these tricks week after week to the platforms, I don't perform a lot of this stuff. I'll close with a number. I miffed it, huh, Ted? <laughs> Let me do B-Wave then as a, as a uh, we'll follow up with B-Wave. And you can just imagine if you just remember to spread the cards the right direction. And you probably will if it's in your working repertoire. It's kind of my mantra. I think I self-sabotage self by how much commentary I have about doing the hard tricks good and the easy tricks bad. <sighs> All right, B-Wave. This is what B-Wave looks like. So the question is this. Do I use Twisted Sisters? That's a good question. I used to use it a lot. And I believe in this trick greatly. Uh, I don't use it anymore. 
pocket management, and I generally prefer sleight of hand over extra packet tricks. But for a beginner or for someone that wants a self-working routine where all you have to concentrate on is audience, audience management, it's great. So for B-Wave, it's, it's this, and let's not embarrass ourselves again. You have someone name a queen, a long story short is you got to limit their selection to a color. And there's a lot of ways to do this, but you just limit it. They say one of the red queens. If someone would name one of the red queens, this is how direct B-Wave can be. <laughs> Salazar's forgiving me. The Queen of Hearts, Matthew Mosley says the Queen of Hearts. And this is a good choice because in this packet, and maybe I just pretend to turn it over. I don't know what the pre presentation is. But look, there's one card upside down. It's the Queen of Hearts. It's the only card that has a red back. And it's the only card there is. Now, that's a good trick, right? That's a B-Wave. Someone names a queen. It's the only one face up. It's the only one with an odd colored back. And uh, hey, maybe that is better. Maybe that is better. Ultimately, I propose this. I carry this wherever I go. It's the best trick deck in the universe. And this one allows you to produce any card name. So we'll just do that quickly. Any, anyone name any card in the chat. I know I have a lot of veteran eyes in here, but if you're not a veteran eyeball, you'll appreciate this moment. Any card at all. Dorian Riddell says it's better. Phoenix wants the two of spades. All right, we're going to use the two of spades. So this one doesn't have the odd back, but when you go through the deck, you'll see that there's one card that is upside down. It's the only card that's upside down in the pack. It's the only one, and it is the two of spades. And this is the power of the invisible deck. It's any card named is backwards. If you want the, if you want the odd back, you could consider the brainwave deck, which is where B-Wave got its name from. And now I'm going down a rabbit hole that I don't want to even go down, but I guess while I'm talking about it, I can mention you can get these things at conjure.com and there's an unintended commercial. But yeah, B-Wave or Twisted Sisters, leave your comments. So, oh, King O asked if I have any of the Peter Pelican's work. I do a lot of Bannon stuff. I have not ventured into Pelican territory, but I am uh, interested. My favorite packet trick is plastic surgery. We're going to do that next, but let me give away some things first. Yeah, plastic surgery. Also, uh, no, we're going to talk about this. Is this how's our camera here? This is Adam Wilbur's What, Where, When, and Why Wallet. Alexa, stop. I just realized I've been listening to funk this whole time. I've got some interesting ideas on this wallet. If you have not seen it, I think you might be interested. And uh, if you have seen it, prepare for uh, a little love on that plot. All right, here, this one, let's give away this Twisted Sisters package. Oh, that's not what we want. We want this and this. All right, close enough. If you've commented on the community thread, your name is on the wheel. And if you know, you know. If you don't know, you're late to the party, but someone here is going to win this Twisted Sister package. And full disclosure, you're getting the set that I performed with. I will give you the directions with the pack so you don't get the fine packaging. Sometimes I have to be cheap. But I'm still giving it away. Here we go. Spinning the wheel now. Good luck, everyone. And the best of luck goes to Game Blast. Game Blast, you're going to be the winner for this Twisted Sister giveaway, and I will find you in the comments of said giveaway, and congratulations to you. Now, we're going to do the rest of the giveaway after I talk about this www, www wallet. 
And if you're not familiar with what that is, we're giving away a gift assortment deck from Conjure.com, a matching deck of bikes, and then you get a weapons pack. This is the craziest gaff deck of all. And that's like a $50 value. We're going to send that to someone. We've sent packages to Vietnam recently. We've sent packages to Australia, and sometimes we send them to Tennessee. So uh, where will that be going? We'll find out later today. Let's move on. Let me take a quick look over here. Let me expand my world and pay a little more attention to the comments to see if there's anything that I need to touch base on. Uh, Trick Kid, there's a good question. How do you enter the gaff giveaway? You want to go drop a comment on the last week's live. You got about 10 minutes to do that. If you haven't dropped a comment, use the word gaff. G-A-F-F. We have the random comment picker set to uh, enter, uh, pick anything that has the word gaff in it. And now you know. You can quit asking. Yeah, do that too. Everybody like the stream. We need some YouTube algorithm. Jay here endorsing the weapons deck. Good to see you, Jay. Thank you very much. All righty then. Uh, Mingu, you're going to want to go to last week's live. If you could copy and paste that in last week's. All right. So again, we'll be drawing for that. I'm going to do it. Let me do this next little bit, and then we'll talk about the thing. So this is the what? Where, when, why wallet. And wow, what a fun piece is this. Very happy. Let me get the wallet out. This, this alone is worth it, in my opinion. This is a magic device. So you get this, and this, this gives you many, 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 many options. I'll leave it front and center so you guys can see it. Maybe... Make sure you know I'm not doing any black art or anything. All right, these are the cards we started the stream with. I'm going to give them a little mix here. We'll pretend to shuffle. Of course, I'm not, but at least I pretend I pretend pretty good. Sometimes I pretend gooder than others. If there's, any, if there's anything questionable about this procedure, it's that right there. So Adam has, a, has this trick where he has four cards in a wallet. And then he asks, and then he asks someone to. <laughs> I'm thinking this as I'm doing, as I'm doing presentations. I could talk to you. Adam, he has a trick where he has four cards. He takes them out of the wallet, and then he asks you to name one of the cards. There you go. The kick, the kick count looks so much better when you're not staring at it. <laughs> so, I'm thinking this trick is improved slightly if we ask our spectators to touch four cards. So you take a shuffled deck, you go through the pack, and you have them touch four cards, and then they name any one of the four cards. So you go from a touched, and so now we're kind of back to the B-Wave situation. Would someone name one of these cards? Queen of Hearts, Seven of Hearts, Queen of Clubs, Seven of Clubs, and hey, I'm betting you get this right. In fact, I've already put the money on it. The money is in the wallet. Yep, I bet, I'm betting on you, as Adam would say, and we're going to go with a free, the seven of clubs. Man, Phoenix is nailing it today. He must have had his typing lessons back in the school. The seven of clubs is a wonderful choice. I mean, you could have had seven of hearts, queen of clubs, queen of hearts. You like the seven of hearts. Perfect. And now you probably have a couple of questions. Well, I have a couple of questions of my own. This one will answer just about... This one will just answer just about anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong card there. Hold on. Oh, I was on the right card. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Where is the card? Oh, man. There it is. There it is. Crap. Phoenix, seven of clubs. You're probably wondering why. Why is, did he put the queen of clubs? No, Kraft did type the seven of clubs before anyone else. This is technical issues. Probably wondering why is he even doing that or what, what is going on now? Does it even matter what card is picked? And hey, when, when, did the, when did the cards vanish and where did they go? Where did they go? Like I said, the answer, the answer is here. 
it's it's oh the answer is look in the wallet and if you if you look in the wallet you'll see an envelope there is one card in the envelope and that is the freely named seven of clubs and i've only done this trick once but so far i've nailed it and my artwork's horrible but that's a addition to the effect and that's my Oh, what would be my inter, inter, introductory presentation of the what, where, when, why wallet? Now, here's, I think we could do this. As I put this away, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this here. If I were Adam, I would reset the trick this way. Here's a great reset. Turn this card over. And then half past the bottom card as you put them in the wallet. And now if you're doing it Adam's version, you can use the four cards and do it again. I'm going to do that for clarity. Let me get this comment off and I'll see if I can do this one more time. A little clearer. Would someone else name a card that is not the seven of clubs? Any card will do. You can name the seven of clubs if you'd like, but it, it could be any one. And again, my suggestion here is that we use these cards from a shuffled deck, but this will be more like, this will be more like Adam presents it. All right. So Danny LeClaire coming in with the queen of hearts, not the seven of clubs, the, <laughs> the queen of hearts. Sometimes I forget things. Queen of Hearts will work, but I have to mention, why didn't you pick one of the other three? Yeah, if you don't mention that, the trick don't work. But if you mention it just right, you can say, what is going on? What happened to the backs? When did the faces, when did the faces vanish? Why is this happening? And where did my card go? And then you say, well, you look, you look in the wallet. Now, in the wallet, we, what do we have? The seven of, oh, but this time, no, we have one card inside. It's the freely named Queen of Hearts. And man, as long as I've been doing this trick, and that's twice now, I've yet to miss it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I'm thinking this is maybe our ideal outcome for... Adam Wilbur's what, where, when, why wallet. It's a winner. I give this thing like thumbs up, man. I, you know, here's the thing. We know, I, we know I think it's good because I took the original idea and then I started experimenting with it. And in my universe, whenever I get a piece of magic that inspires me to tinker, to play, to create, well, that's a good piece in my opinion. And beyond that, this wallet and its system, because this is kind of what it is, it's a revelation system. If you never do the trick, this thing and these envelopes are huge value. And I'll mention this, one negative. If I have, Adam, if you're watching, here's the negative. You could include a couple extra envelopes because these will wear out. There, that's the only negative. There's no extra paper envelopes for the prop that will wear out. This this wallet's good quality, and uh, no, it's a it, no. You can use this for all kinds of things. That's but look, that routine is great, right? And uh, this is me playing with it. I opened this thing Tuesday. Adam was busy at the session over in the UK with Josh J and Andy Gladwin, so we haven't really had a chance to talk about it, but. Uh, I did send him the idea. He liked it and appreciates it. Hey, y'all go to Volpine Creations, spend some money. I'm not being paid to do this. I just support guys who do cool things. Adam's doing some of the coolest right now. It's a Volpine Creations. Volpine, it's V-U-L-P-I-N-E. Adam, your prop should have your name on it, just not, not just the symbol. Where's the name? We don't know. Is that what it is? 25 bucks? That's too cheap. I don't know. 
I, I was happy to acquire this one when I got the coffee cups and beans package, something I continue to work on. Want to make sure we make a good showing of that piece when we bring it to the platforms. <clears throat> so yeah, Rourke, I use, uh, do I use any wallets for my street performance? I use this one. This is the Real Man Speed Loader. This is a Tony Miller design, which is slideless. Here's the peak. This is the gimmick. That's the one I use, and it pays for itself the first day I use it. Oh, Cat Cat wants a trick with the glasses. I'll work on that. All right, let's do one more trick. Yes, what my favorite one was. Oh, I got to give you the giveaway. We're doing the giveaway for the gaff cards. Promise to do that. Here it is, guys. We're doing. We're going to the YouTube comment picker, and uh, let's see what this looks like. We'll do more questions, guys. Let me get this. Uh, let me get the official. We're already over time. <laughs> let me get the official things out of the way, and I'm already over time. All right, I got to boink this this way and find the comment wheel. Oh, it's not horrible. All right, great. So this is the YouTube comment picker. I put in the comments. I put in like I put gaff in this one. No repeats, no duplicates, and so on. This is endorsed by the government of YouTube. So you know it's real. I'm going to go over here now. And uh, if you've entered, good luck. That's not where we go. It's not here either. We love advertising. Start raffle and pick random winner. This is what we're going to do. Good luck, everyone. Let me scroll up here. Mr. G coming in with the gaff cards comment. Mr. G, winner, winner. I already said chicken dinner. You're going to get the triple threat bundle package. Y'all, if you didn't win and you're interested in these things, I did leave a link in the comment below that'll take you directly to conjure.com and this gaff card bundle. Consider picking one up while they're available. I handcraft them myself. And I've done enough advertising today. Let me go back to the main screen on StreamYard. I'm going to wrap this up with uh, plastic surgery. And then if anyone wants to hang around and chat a little bit, we'll do that as well. Yeah, plastic surgery. Been doing this one for the better part of uh, 25 years. I keep this with me in case I ever need cab fare home. <clears throat> I also keep another version of the Monty in here. This is the four card Monty, which I've taught on this platform. If you want to add one to your repertoire. I've also taught this effect on the platform to my members. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And you probably... Know the scam, little, it's not a trick really, it's a game, little game of hanky poo. As they stay up, stay on the streets, the black's for me, this one's for you, and hey diddle diddle, she's the one in the middle. So you know the scam, the three card money, you bet where the queen is, and then you lose. And it doesn't matter where you bet, you might think I sneak it to the bottom, but it's not there. Some people think I, some people think I sneak it into the middle. But you never want to bet where you think it is. And then some people think I put it on the top. A sure bet that's sure to lose. It's not on the top. That's right. It's not on the top. It's not on the bottom. It's not in the middle. It's just not. Not at all until the dealer needs it. And then it comes right back, you know, when the money's on the line. Now, with practice, this can be done with blinding speed. And I'll do that now. Let's do it with the queen. Watch the money card. See if you can catch the exact instant I switch it to the other hand. That's the nine. Do it again here. Watch as the queen goes to the table, but not really. Some say how. Some say why. <laughs> Some people don't say anything. I'll show you how. Just see so you don't lose money on this thing. It's one of those adjustable queens. Yeah, it's an adjustable. Remember when we were talking about Marietta earlier and the stretching? This is where this started with Peter Kane back in the 70s. He would proclaim to stretch a queen. And I must admit that a card like this is easier to handle. 
Now, alternatively, you can squeeze it on the end to get it gets wider on the sides. And these are some developments made by Richard Kaufman, John Rockerbomber, Wesley James, Don England. The lineage is long, but none of these are the best way to cheat. No, no. Indeed, the best the best way to cheat the three card Monty is to use a card that's just a little bit smaller. Yeah, just a little bit smaller. That's the real secret to the three card Monty. And hey, don't tell don't tell I told because I get in trouble for that. The council frowns on these things. Boink! Plastic surgery. We get one last, we get one last plug-in because I do offer the cards for this in Mike Powers' Plastic Lady package. He features my routine along with a couple of other things when you when you buy this setup. If you do get a gaff card assortment, I include the main card that you need times four. So this is one of the goals in creating these packages is that you can get the cards that you need to do what I do. And that's one of the reasons I offer that. Here's the Uber bonus to members. I've taught that routine on the members tutorial. So if you haven't watched the plastic surgery tutorial and you're a member, well, maybe you want to go give that one a peek. It's worth a look. And like I said, it's the only packet trick that I do. I've done it for 35 years or 25 years, not that old yet. And maybe you'll find it suits you as well. And even if you don't do the whole long routine, there's bits of that routine that are worth your attention. All right, that was a stream. I'm going to hang out for another five minutes or so, maybe 10. We'll see what happens. But yeah, we did some giveaways. We did some packet tricks. We messed up the self-working things. No, no surprise there. Uh, if you have any pertinent questions to packet tricks, that might be the best things to, to get in. And uh, if you want to win more things, well, just stay tuned. I'll give away stuff eventually. It's always nice to be patient and thankful instead of requestable. Trick, good to hang with you as well. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for your comments. Do I send to the Channel Islands? Let me explain. I get a lot of requests for international shipping. My shopping cart does not support it. And current shipping is just abysmal. So I do not uh, encourage ship. I don't encourage shopping in the United States in general. I do handle these things on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you'd like to email me, conjure at conjure.com, then uh, maybe I can accommodate. A good packet trick for a newbie. The classic is Color Money. I'm going to encourage you to look at the video I did on Color Money. I explain a couple of things you could learn. I did this live session about five or six weeks ago, building a better Monty. And you'll learn, you'll learn the four card Monty, and that's the one that I would recommend. Danny's asking about the skill level here. There is one move. There's one move. You have to peel two cards as one. It happens before anything magical happens. The heat's off. I would say this is maybe not the beginner beginner trick. So maybe an intermediate person would buy that effect over some others. <clears throat> I'm not up on the Blackpool tricks. How do I carry packet tricks around? So when I, I just use this. Goes in my upper shirt pocket. That's it. I only carry one. I'll give you a good tip. Let me, if you're looking for a good packet trick carrier, let's go to the wall of mystery. It's over here. I have a few of these and they're hard to find now. This is an Aluma wallet. These were a fancy wallet in the 80s. This is the extra large size, and it's accordion pleated. So we can put many packet tricks in here. You could put like a dozen of them in there. And it all opens up nicely. 
closes up. This will fit in your back pocket. And I reserve this to carry around specific gaff cards that I use in other routines, mainly when I'm performing for other magicians. But there's an inside tip on how to carry gaff cards. Find an Aluma wallet. There's a lot of professional options for these things as well. You could just Google packet trick carriers, some nice leather ones out there. I'm sure you want to use for the longest time. This thing was actually made as a switching wallet. This is a J J O L wallet. And for the longest time, it's like a two sided deal. Yeah. I would just carry my packet tricks in here. These are some of my trick travelers gaff. Here's a gaff card of my own construction. But uh, with these exposed, sometimes moisture, if I've got this in my pocket and I sweat, I'm sweating, which in New Orleans, I often am sweating when I'm performing, the cards get wet. So it's nice to have them protected on the outside as opposed to this. But JOL makes great stuff. If you're looking for leather products, I know he makes packet trick carriers as well. Highly recommended. There, Marty coming in with an Uber recommendation. That's a great one. I've also done a lesson on this trick. I did a Alex Elmsley history lesson where we talk about the Elmsley count and we talk about the four card trick. Go watch that. That's a great one to start with. Good call, Marty. See you around, Keystone. Good to see you, bar. Yeah, I was just about to blab about this, Matthew. I was just reading about it. I don't, yeah, I have not found any inf useful information as well. It's still in beta, so it might be a couple of months until I even have access to it. I'm in the same boat as you. When I know more, I will talk about it more. Tom Britton. What's up, bro? Good to see you. Yeah, Trick Traveler. That's another one that's on the membership. I spew it all there. Got good news for the members. Next week, I got a couple of good items. I've held back on one of them. I have my version of the birthday trick coming up for you guys. And last week, I was chatting with Rich Aviles. He's the guy who did these projects. Rich has given me carte blanche to do what I want with this project. I will be selling it at conjure.com, but dig it, members. I'm going to upload it to YouTube. Y'all can just look at it whenever you want. So this will be a nice. This this, this I'm, I'm 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 distracted by Gary's comment. Yes, that's correct. That's what they were sold for, and then sometimes magicians bought them to put packet tricks. Roark, I'd love to do more. You know, here's the thing, and reason I do more lives than more produced videos is that the videos that I film and put the effort in, they they're so time consuming that, uh, you know, I wish I had a clone. But yes, more history lessons are coming. Tell you what's coming next week. Magic trivia is coming back next Wednesday. So if you're wondering what's going to happen next Wednesday, I'm bringing magic trivia back. It's going to be a little more challenging. Uh, my goal is to stump Marty Jacobs. And uh, Marty, you're going to be disqualified for 90% of the magic trivia. But that's all right. Anyway, yeah, Pinky Swear coming to the membership, and uh, I just digitized the file into a manageable size last night. I'll get that done in the next couple days. I'll do I'll do a little chat about that once it's finished. <clears throat> Classic pack gimmick tricks from uh, Dan Harla. That's a lot, brother. Do I have any classic gimmick tricks from many years ago? Man, that's kind of my beat, my jam. That's all I do is old stuff. Sympathetic cards gets my vote. I've done that one on the platform quite a few times. Phoenix, the short answer is no. There. <laughs> that's the short answer. If I, I have to say that because if I say yes to everyone, then I can't afford my house. <clears throat> So where do I get my pads? These are Patrick Prezecki pads. You're looking for Magical Surfaces by Patrick. He makes a nice... The backs on these are the best. This is the plush. He carries a couple different versions. 
And these are a little more expensive than some of the ones on the market, but I obviously think they're worth it. I have several of them. Nathaniel, I do have a busking lecture notes that I do uh, offer at my lectures. I put it up on, uh, on conjure.com as a download because so many people were interested in getting it. Drew's going to be the enforcer. All right. <laughs> hey, man, we like Phoenix. He's a good kid. Just over enthusiastic. He's a supporter. He's a per, uh, and we're, we understand that sometimes young minds are over enthusiastic. Boy, that's a, you know, I'm uh, Gary's mentioned in the sidewalk shuffle. I'm going through the tricks that I used to do when I started street performing. Sidewalk shuffle was in my repertoire as my attempt to emulate Harry Anderson. I'm crafting a Harry Anderson memorabilia video. I'll talk about that trick when I do it. I have pictures of it. And yeah, ultimately I switched for the four card money I just talked about. You doing it with no gaps. My birthday's in August. Thanks for asking, David. Uh, it's kind of like a big mouse pad. That's what it is. It, there's no gimmicks. Everyone on the shorts always thinks I have slits or magnets or secret things. It's just a soft surface. It's like a card table. It's like having a blackjack table, but portable and maybe a little more conducive to some magical things. So Plastic Lady is the name of that. Uh, it's gone through many names, but this is the Plastic Lady. That's the shrinking trick. Bro, that's the best. Warpo gifted me a couple things from the shop. I got one of his uh, Hember wallets. I mentioned that a couple weeks ago. Super happy to have that. I've got a couple hairy pieces that I love. You know, I see a couple of people talking about Dan Harlan stuff. It's interesting. Murphy's is running a special right now, and they're featuring a lot of older Dan Harlan material. I did go through the list and try to find some things, but uh, didn't really find a Dan Harlan one to pick. You know, some of that early 2000 Dan Harlan packet trick magic is maybe not the toppest tier for the current age. Uh, that would be Aronson, Sheik. I learned the mem deck when Mike Close popularized it. Yeah. You laughing with me? Uh, Joey, it's not uncommon for me to be rolling coins as I drive to a gig, you know. So if I'm driving to a gig, I've got some palming going on while I'm driving. Maybe I'm driving one-handed and doing this, or maybe I'm doing it this handed. Maybe it's no handed and the wheels are driving. The coin roll is a good warm up. The palming helps. And then card flourishes. I also make a very good habit of always getting the nervous energy out by shaking the hands, jumping up and down, getting that, getting that loose nerves going you know, before a gig. I'm going to take the fifth on table hopping. Currently not advocating this and or discussing it in public platforms. My, yeah, I've said too much already. Did I mention I have merch now? Did I mention that I have a store and we have things I'm selling? It's on YouTube. You can find the spring store on YouTube. So if you want to support that way, I don't know if I, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I got stickers coming. I got buttons coming. We're merching up, folks. I'm going to start sending those in people's package. Yeah, that was Harry eating the guinea pig. That's him. Matt King does it now. Ah, oh, trick approves. Thank you. These are, these are con original designs. This kind of symbolizes my being. Be cool and do card tricks. All right, guys, I'm looking for important conversation to keep me here. Okay, Tom, I'm going to need a lesson from Tom Britton on how to sell things. Bookmarks. 
Need bookmarks. Good point. I was sitting with Aaron last night thinking, what do I, what do I, bookmarks? You know it's good when we write it down. That's when it's the good stuff. Man, that's a great suggestion, Tom. All right, Tom. If I can ever afford a financial guy, I'm putting you on the team. <clears throat> Sticker Mule had buttons, $10 for 50 buttons. So I got this on a button. And it might not be the coolest thing, but how do I pass up 50 buttons for 10 bucks? No doubt there is tricks with bookmarks. Okay, then put a... Pfft. Man, now I got a whole new project. Bookmark magic bookmarks. Thank you, Tom. So yeah, Craft, that's the idea. You get a sticker, you get a button. Maybe now you get a magic bookmark. And my customers that are regular shoppers, they will tell you that you often get free gifts with me. If you shop with me regularly, it's not uncommon to find some magic land yap in your package. And maybe someone will testify in the comments about that. Matthew's mentioning another trick I used. When I started busking, two of the main pieces were Professor's Nightmare and the Sidewalk Shuffle. I also did sponge balls and I juggled. Those were the show. Juggle I opened the show by catching a ping pong ball on my nose. You're talking about a crowd draw. You're going to want something more boisterous, but the thing about ropes is that when you're doing rope magic, people know it's magic. And as opposed to doing a card trick or using money like coins, they might think it's gambling or a hustle. But if you're doing ropes, it's probably something they can appreciate and know that it's magic. And yes, I do think it's a good crowd draw. Something that has, a, a, excuse me, a little more sound to it, probably, probably gooder. But it's a good one. I use ropes still. <clears throat> TMI, Drew. All right, Trick. Time to roll. I feel like we're winding down here, folks. I'm on OT, but hey, it's been fun. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed the session. It's been nice spending almost an hour with you. I only plan 30 minutes for these things. I try to make them uh, attainable. Oh, here's a good suggestion, though. Sponges from mouth every time. There, you want a crowd draw? Do that one. <clears throat> well, how do you catch a ping pong ball on your nose? David, sounds like you have some Googling to do. I can't tell just all of the secrets. Yep. I was actually going to do that on a short. And then I, a friend of mine did it on a short like a day or two after I was going to shoot it. So I had to put it on the back burner. Matthew, you will become a much better magician when you start doing that. Congratulations on that choice. My email is conjure at conjure.com. C-O-N-N-J-U-R-E, two N's, conjure. Drop me a line. I answer. <clears throat> I'm, getting our, I'm getting intermittent questions and I don't want to miss, oh. This is, you're looking for concrete. Hey, Nathaniel, just send me an email. I'll send them to you. Nathaniel, conjure at gmail. Conjure at conjure.com. Just send me an email. Well, now I've answered what you do with a double backer before. Not going to answer that right now, though. Go get it, Gary. Good to see you, man. Ciao. Where do you see the coffee cups and beans? And as soon as you start uh, paying my uh, livestock fees, you know, those things eat. <laughs> when, I, when I ingratiate beans into my over that consume and I have to spend for them, I, I put them on the back burner. Conjure.com, Phoenix, conjure.com. That's the word we're looking for, Gary. It's a wrap, guys. I'm winding down. Can you feel it?
Time to go get some coffee and uh, ramp up the evening as I move into phase B. What will that be? Stay tuned and stay tuned for next week. Magic Trivia, Wednesday, 4 p.m. See you guys then.